Well, today we're talking about how you can get the best possible video on your EOS R6. Let's do it. Well, hello, if you do not know who I am, my name is Tony and I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Today we're talking about video settings for the R6. Now, I also have the R5, but most of the time I'm grabbing my R6 when I'm going out on the trail on my motorcycle or I am hitting the trail in the Jeep or hanging out with the family just because I like the file sizes of the photos better. They're smaller, they load faster, they're easier to work with, and uh, there's just a lot of features on the R5 that I just don't use. So I kind of keep that camera a little bit nicer for pro jobs and uh, when I need it. So. R6 is pretty much my go-to camera these days, and I love it. I love it. Great quality, and uh, and so many good features are built in to this camera for like $1,000 cheaper than the R5. So, chances are if you've uh, got an R6, you know how amazing this camera is, and I want to help you be able to get the best video that you can. So, just before we get into the settings, I want to remind you, video is so much more than just camera settings. It really involves good lighting, it involves great sound and composition. All of those things matter to be able to have really good video. Just to let you guys know right now, I've got a microphone literally right there. Uh, that is the Rode Video Micro, and then I'm actually plugging the wireless go into it, so I don't have any cables. And so that's a really nice setup. If you don't have good audio, you will not have good video. Uh, same thing with lighting. I've got a big window right here on the side, and then I've got a fill light to kind of help fill in the rest. And uh, one thing that I've noticed is that you have to overexpose when you're shooting in C-Log. And we're gonna talk about all of that in just a minute, but you wanna make sure that you're overexposing just a little bit, uh, and then you can bring those highlights down, those shadows down, all of that kind of stuff, and it looks really, really good. All right, so now that we have that covered, um, we need to get into the camera settings. Now, some of these are gonna be subjective because of creative output and things like that, for, but for the most part, there's some rules that you really need to follow. So go ahead and take your camera out and we will just walk through this together. The first thing you need to do is switch that dial over to video and then turn it off of auto video. You want complete control and just flip it into manual. Now that we're in manual, let's go ahead and start digging into some of the settings. The first thing we need to do is put it in 4K 24. If someone is talking to the camera, you want it to be in 24 frames per second, it's just gonna look the best. Now, if you're shooting B-roll or supplemental footage and you want to be able to slow that footage down, you wanna shoot in 4K 60, and I'll talk about those settings in a little bit. You want your shutter speed at double the frame rate. You may have heard that before, that is 1 50th. You want your aperture wide open because these cameras can handle it. I'm shooting on the Nifty 50 right now and I'm shooting at f1.8. It's tracking my face. I don't ever have to worry about autofocus. I get a little bit blurry background that way. Now the other setting that you have to adjust is your ISO. This is how you're gonna be able to control your exposure. You never wanna change your shutter speed. You never wanna change your aperture. Well, you may want to if there's more people, but for the most part, we're shooting in wide open because we want cinematic. <laughs> okay, so baseline if we're shooting in C-Log, which we are, is to shoot at 400 ISO. Now, the image may be just way too bright because your shutter speed is at 1 50th. What you need to do is use a variable ND filter. It screws right on the front of the lens and then you adjust your exposure properly with that variable ND. Not going below 400 or um, adjusting some of your other settings. That's just the the best way to get video is to use a variable ND. Now, say your image is too dark, you're in a dark room, you don't have a big window right next to you. What you need to do is turn your ISO up. Now, just do not be afraid of ISO. I shot a wedding and I was up to 12, 8, 12,000 ISO and I still had usable content. So, don't be afraid to push up five, six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand. 2,000, 3,200, you want the best, best you can get is at 400, but don't be afraid to go up if you need that extra light. All right, a couple other settings that we need to talk about to be able to get really good video is you wanna make sure that your white balance is appropriate. So right now I have this window right next to me and I have this daylight balanced light. 
right here. So I am shooting at 5600 Kelvin. The other thing you can do is just turn your white balance selector to the little sun. If you're shooting on a cloudy day, you want either shady or cloudy. If you're shooting with some really orange tungsten lights, put it on the light bulb. Now, here's a little pro tip. If you want to change the mood a little bit, maybe you want it to feel warmer outside, go ahead and crank up your white balance. If you want it to feel colder and snowy and blue feeling, you wanna turn down your white balance. And that will help you create some mood within your video. Another setting that we should talk about is the C-Log settings. So let's walk through those real quick. Go ahead and go to your menu. It's in the red, which is the camera menu, and then go to the third page. Now that we're on the third page, go ahead and select C Canon Log Settings and go ahead and turn on C-Log. Once that's turned on, there's a couple other settings that we're gonna need to do. Turn on your view assist, and what this does is it lets you see what the image is gonna look like with a little contrast and saturation. So you're not just looking at a really flat video. The other thing you wanna do is maybe uh, change your characteristics. Sometimes I like to bump the strength up to plus two. That just, uh, just gives it a little bit of a extra edge. And then uh, make sure that your color matrix is on EOS Original. Now, if you're trying to match up to other cameras that do not have C-Log, say you're shooting in a standard profile or faithful or neutral, go ahead and switch that to neutral. And that will help you align your cameras better if you're neutral opposed to original. But if we're matching up with cinema cameras, if it's just one camera, I like the color better on original, but that's really personal preference. All right, so now that you have that all set up, you're shooting in log, you're shooting 24 frames per second. Then you wanna make sure that you dial in your audio. I, uh, a lot of times will shoot in auto mode. Uh, and the way that you get that is you go to red camera menu again, then the first menu, you can go to sound recording. And really this is pretty simple. Uh, you can leave it in auto. These cameras have really good limiters and they don't blow out the signal very frequently. But if you want a little bit more control, which what I'm doing right now is I switch it to manual and then I record level appropriately to what the microphone's level is. Uh, I'm running at like, uh, like 10% right now. I keep that that noise level really low when I'm recording and then I can boost it when I'm in, in post-processing, raise it up to where it needs to be and that way there's no noise in there. Keep that wind filter and attenuator off. You can, uh, you can add those features in in post and that way it's not baked into your audio file. Now another really helpful video setting you can use on your R6 is zebras. I use these to help me see when I'm getting to be too bright. And so go ahead into your red menu again, then we will go to number seven and you'll see on their zebra settings. Go ahead and flip that on and you'll see that there's two different options. Level one, I usually have at like uh, 90 plus or minus, or maybe even 85, that lets me know I'm getting close to pushing the exposure too much. And then the second one I actually have at 100, that means it's completely blown out. So now once you have that on, go ahead and uh, go back and just start to overexpose your image. And you're gonna start to see these lines start to creep into your, your, your image that look like zebra patterns. And so that's when you know that those specific spots on your composition are blown out and you're too overexposed. Just go ahead and back down from there. That lets you know that you're too bright and that those images are not gonna be recoverable when you're in post. Now there's times when maybe you just have to do that. Your subject is standing in the shade and in order to get them well lit, you have to blow out the sky. That's just part of life. And uh, until they come up with cameras that are as good as our eyes, we have to deal with sacrificing at some point. I always tend to, to always protect my subject and let the sky blow out. Okay, so let's talk about slow motion. There's two ways to do it. You can shoot in 4K 60, which does a couple things. It slows it down to 40% and you still retain your audio. What's nice about 4K 60 is if you wanted to play it back in a 24 frame timeline, you could still play it in real time. All you have to do to do that, switch it over to 4K 60 and then bump up your shutter speed to 1 125th. You wanna double that frame rate. 
Then the other option is you could actually shoot in high speed recording and shooting in 120 frames per second, which is super slow. The disadvantage with 120 is one, it's baked into the sequence. So it's coming out of the camera slow motion and two, you don't have any audio with it. But there's times when you want that super slow motion. Uh, a lot of times it looks really good with high action scenes or even water, things like that. If you're shooting a wedding or you're shooting your daughter or something like that, most of the time you do not need 120 frames per second. To each their own, I just, I'm not crazy about it because of those things. You lose uh, your raw audio and you also lose the fact that it plays back in real time. Now you can always speed it up, but 120 frames sped up to real time, uh, it just looks really jittery to me. So if you're gonna shoot in 120, let's go ahead and do that. Go to your red camera menu once more, then you go in the first line and you'll see right there, uh, movie, recording quality. And if you click on that, then you can go to high frame rate, go ahead and turn it on. The only other thing that you need to do before you start recording is double your frame rate. So now we're shooting in one two fiftieth, meaning we're sucking up a lot of light. Chances are you're removing that variable ND filter and you're cranking the ISO to be able to get what you need. But if it's super sunny, this is an option if you do not have a, a variable ND with you. It's really cool to be able to have that option and I think that the 120 looks really nice on the R6. It's just I don't use it that much for those reasons. All right guys, well hopefully this video is helpful. I will put in some B-roll so that you can see what I've gotten with the R6. And uh, other than that, hope you have a good day. Talk to you soon.